Rafe DVM's coming at you with a kind of a weekend project on the farm. We invested in some I-beams and we threw them on top of the uh, ram stalls on one side. Um, we've wanted to do this actually for about the last couple of years. I know there's a fan up there and some lights and that's all got to move. Um, we also went on to Facebook and met a nice lady and her family. Um, her name was Judy and uh, she sold us um, uh, a hay elevator. And we're going to complete um, the small little loft area above the stalls that we had planned when we originally designed um, this horse barn. So we threw the, um, the uh, elevator up there right away. Um, I'm kind of using it like a ladder, to be honest. And we threw those I-beams up there. They're laying on their side. And then I tipped the I-beams up. And I got to admit, you're not going to see me cutting any of these I-beams or trying to make them fit. And the reason is, is because I special ordered them right to the size that I needed. These things are about $20 a piece. And then if you pay an extra eight or nine bucks, you can have them any length you want. Um, and then you still got to pay delivery. But, you know, for what it's worth, um, I put them 16 on center and I stood them up and I put little two by four braces in between just to kind of hold them in place while we put things together. And then the girls and I went up there and uh, started laying some tongue and groove flooring. Um, you know, I, I didn't really know what type of flooring to go with, so I just went by uh, what the guy at the uh, lumber store was telling me. He thought, with my application, a nice smooth uh, sanded on one side, um, tongue and groove OSB three-quarter inch would be good enough. 16 on center, um, you know, and we're not, we're not going to stack, you know, 50 feet of of hay bales on this thing. Um, understandable, it's on solid wood walls on two of the ends that um, Ram has, and then in the middle, it's on a solid wall on only half of it because the uh, center section there is, is steel um, piping. So, you know, it's not like I want to crush my stalls by any means, but they definitely can take the weight of a lot of things, and uh, there's no reason why to, why not use the space instead of wasting it. So we got ourselves a one and five eighths inch um, decking screws, and we put these I beams up. I want to say these are twelve and a quarter I beams, and they're twenty two feet and like two inches long, and they're made to span the whole distance. But um, like I said, there's actually a divider wall in between that they're also resting on. As far as level, the stalls were put in level. So really didn't have to level up the high beams. Um, they really went in well. And uh, as far as the tongue and groove flooring, it went in pretty smooth too. We left a little bit of gapping because, you know what, I've seen this darn OSB or plywood or whatever you want to call it expand. And I've, I've never liked that. So um, I, ma I made sure that I had about a nickel thickness everywhere I went just so that I could uh, get it done. And, and my girls enjoyed the screwing. They got the screw guns out and they, they taped off some lines and about every 12 inches we put in a screw and, you know, really it was kind of a fun family project. I'm not 100% done with it yet. I, I want to put a, um, a back, um, I guess I would call it railing, but just to keep the hay off the steel, I want to put a back wall on it um, with a couple, you know, two by fours, just kind of push things forward. Um, the major part of today was actually spent on the stairs. These uh, stringers are just a Pain in the butt to get up. Um, we did three stringers, 36 inch wide um, stairs is what we like to do. And uh, that's actually to code in our area, which is good. And we bolted them right to the to the wall of the Morton barn, those big beams. And then on the other side, I put a great big beam on it too, just to give it more support. Rested that sucker right on the, right on the ground. And I found that uh, the big Spax anchor um, screws work really well for putting this stuff together. Um, my daughter Anna cut all the, the treads and we put them up and I'm in debate if I'm going to, if I'm going to put those, those risers in yet. But, you know, for right now it's, it's what it is. Again, it's, it's not in a house. It is in a barn. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta make it within reason, um, you know, safety wise, but you know, that's about where it goes. I'm I'm also undecided if I want to put the spindles in or not. Um, I certainly can, um, but I did um, put the railing in with um, uh, the handguard on top, and that's at uh, uh, 48 inches. 
And then I put another one in um, about, oh, I don't know, 13 or 14 inches below it just to kind of fill the, fill the spacing. And it turned out pretty nice. I also went across the front of the loft with uh, 48 inch uh, 4x4s um, and I, I use green treated because that's what they had at the store folks. I went to the lumber yard and I was going to buy you know just regular 4x4s but apparently um, lumber yards are you know under scrutiny too these days with all these darn bugs and you know china crap and all that stuff so um, they, they just don't have them so I had to buy a green treated so it's going to have some green in it. There's no reason for green treated posts this high up, but uh, it's whatever. Um, I decided to drill these in and uh, then lag them so that they'd be really, really strong. Um, I thought that was probably the best considering it is it is a railing. I know you probably could have used you know a, a, you know an eight or nine penny nail or a really long screw, but again, I I decided it was probably in my best interest to lag them. I left a space for the elevator. Um, to bring up bales and for us to throw bales out of it. I am going to put probably, uh, you know, a clip-on rope chain across there, a couple of them, just so that when we're not, you know, moving hay around and stuff, it's it's not a ga gaping opening, um, but I, I did want a place for that to go. And I'm probably going to, you know, get a couple eye bolts and uh, um, attach in the elevator so it, it can't slide backwards or move around. Um, I have the elevator right now, right down on the ground, and I know some people say, hey, get it up, you know, three, four, five feet in the air so you can pull your wagon right up to it. But most of the time when I bring the hay in, I just toss it on the floor. And, you know, I'm figuring the kids will probably just walk over, set it on it, and send it up. And if I have it too high for them, I'm not sure it's going to be easy for them. So right now I've got it, um, I've got it that way. I'm going to bring up some garbage barrels and some buckets. Um, I put a light up here, as you can see. Um, I removed the fan. And, uh, you know, the, the railing's not, not quite done yet, like I said. But, boy, what a nice view over the top. As you can see, you can see the whole area. My wife's going out to get some horses. Kids can ride their bikes below. I really didn't lose any space, really, to the stairs because I'm using underneath the stairs. And it turned out really, really nice. Um, again, you know, having a you know, an elevator and now a tongue and groove floor above the stalls, um, you know, makes it nice. As far as the horses go, Pertrons fit just fine under here. Uh, this is Jewel. Um, she's 16 three hands and she fits great. I am going to have to add an, a light under there though, in both of these stalls. Um, I, I just, I just, it's darker. I just didn't realize that. So I will be wiring in a light in both of those stalls, uh, maybe some LED rope light or an actual light light. Oh, we'll see. Um, but there it is, folks. This this is my loft. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll keep putting out our adventures here on the farmstead for you. Thanks.